Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the brand new Dell XPS 15 9510. So it's the 2021 refresh, and it's actually a pretty big upgrade. This video is very kindly sponsored by Fast Hosts, and UK viewers can win the ultimate work from home setup worth up to five grand by entering the Fast Hosts Techie Test giveaway. Click the link below, and I'll explain more later in the video. But this, well, it's all about the XPS 15, and if you're a regular on the channel, you know that I get pretty excited about these new XPS laptops, uh, which sounds a little bit dodgy, but um, they're probably the best Windows laptop you can buy. They're not perfect, of course. We've had quality control issues from Dell for many years. And as I'll show you with this, there are still a few areas for improvement, but I'm really excited to show you this. I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I've tested it, I've done a bunch of benchmarking, and it's probably one of the biggest upgrades on the XPS lineup for a few years, although, you wouldn't really know from the outside. So this year is mainly a spec bump, and we're getting the latest 11th gen Intel processors, the H45 series, but I think more importantly, we're getting the brand new RTX 3050 Ti graphics cards, which are not only faster, but because we've gone from the GTX 1650 Ti in last year's XPS 15 to the RTX series of graphics cards, we're getting all the RTX features like ray tracing and DLSS, which really is the big deal, and things like NVIDIA Reflex and Broadcast, so I think really the graphics card is the biggest upgrade here, uh, but we are also getting faster RAM. We've gone from 2933 megahertz up to 3200. We also now get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, whereas before we had Thunderbolt 3. And if you wanna go crazy with the spec, there's a new two terabyte storage option. But it's also not just what's on the inside because this is an OLED screen. Now we actually had an OLED version of the XPS 15 two years ago. They dropped it last year for some reason, uh, but now it's back. So there's actually three screen options you can screen op screen options. It's going into Sean Connery there. Three screen options you can buy: a full HD, non-touch, 4K touch, and also this 3.5K touch, but it's an OLED screen. So not quite full 4K, which is a little bit annoying, but they're all this beautiful 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And as you can see with this gloriously thin bezel, and even though this is pretty much identical in terms of design to last year's version, although it has lost just a little bit of weight, although you wouldn't really notice, uh, I still think this is one of the best, most futuristic looking laptops you can buy. And next to something like the MacBook Pro 16, which is in need of a refresh uh, for sure. And I think we might be getting one with a very fancy M1X or M2 chip, maybe in September. So that'll be one to look out for. But next to this, they're both lovely laptops, but this looks properly good. And while we are comparing other laptops, here is the uh, 17 inch, it's last year's one, but it should be visually identical, really. Uh, and you can see the size difference between the 15 and the 17, and also the difference in the colors. This is the Glacier Arctic, whatever you wanna call it, white. And then we've got the more traditional dark gray, but they're both carbon fiber with an all aluminum chassis and build quality is top notch. The 17 really is gigantic, actually, uh, and I can't wait to review the new 17, so stay tuned. But um, I honestly think for most people, the 15 inch is gonna be the better buy. We'll cover this in that other video, but the big difference is really uh, with the 17, aside from the bigger screen, is that we get vapor chamber cooling, so a little bit uh, more sort of beefy cooling, and also uh, the RTX 3060, whereas this tops out with the 3050 Ti. So a little bit more powerful, uh, and also some slight upgradability differences. But for most people, I think the 15 is gonna be one to buy, a little bit cheaper, more compact. And as I say, actually, this has gone on a little bit of a diet. Uh, there's still two battery sizes with this, 56 watt hour and 86. And that does obviously change the weight. Also, the screens have a very small impact as well. But at the top end, the previous XPS 15 weighed 2.05 kilograms. Now we're down to 2.01. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the review, how much is it? Well, it varies depending on where you live. Dell's website is famously awful uh, in terms of, well, in the UK at least, not even removing the word new on the old XPS models. So you can buy a new one with 10th gen processors, which is gonna confuse a lot of people. Um, but in the UK, it starts from about 1600 pounds, whereas in the US it starts from about 1250 or so, but that's a slightly lower spec. So there's different SKUs for different regions. And it tops out with this one at about 3,100 pounds. Uh, that's for the one terabyte. If you wanna go two terabyte, that'll add a bit more. So this is very much an ultra premium laptop. 
Although if we take the base off, you can see that we have two uh, RAM modules, which you can upgrade yourself, and also the M2 SSD, which is under this little uh, protector here. So you can upgrade the RAM and the storage. So you might want to go for a slightly cheaper spec to start with, and then perhaps upgrade it down the line. So new processors, although sadly still no AMD option, uh, new graphics cards, Thunderbolt 4, there's OLED screens made a return, and that's pretty much what's new, but there's still an awful lot to like here carried over, including these fantastic speakers. We have dual woofers and dual tweeters, which make up an eight watt system, and it's one of the best sound setups in a laptop that I've heard. There's some really solid bass to it, which you don't hear very often. It's adorable that you think you could possibly we also get this lovely keyboard, which is one of my favorites on a Windows laptop uh, with a white backlight, and also this massive precision touchpad, which very much is carried over from something like the MacBook Pro onto here, but no complaints, it is lovely to use. So let's talk about this screen, because as I say, it's the first time we've had an OLED option on an XPS 15 in a couple of years, and actually, there is no OLED option on the 17 inch, this is the only one you have, basically. So as you would expect from an OLED, we're getting near infinite contrast, you know, really inky blacks, lovely punchy colors, and also no blooming or light bleed, which is something that we do get when we're talking about mini LED screens. All the talk at the moment is whether uh, Apple will go mini LED with the new MacBooks, they did with the iPad Pro 12.9, and while that obviously is a big step up and also significantly brighter than this at peak brightness, you are still getting that sort of haloing and blooming, which you don't get on an OLED. The downside of that is that it doesn't get as bright. And actually, when you look at the specs on Dell's website, the two other screen options, whether it's the Full HD Plus non-touch or the 4K Plus Touch, both are 500 nits, whereas this is listed as 400 nits. So it's a little bit dimmer. This is a 3.5K display, which I think is the first one I've ever seen with a very strange resolution. This is a little bit under native 4K, so it won't be quite as sharp in terms of the pixel per inch density, although you'd be hard pressed to notice. Um, and also you can of course still play stuff in 4K, but you're not gonna get it back natively. So if you're a stickler for that resolution, if you're all about video editing and you really have to see that full res, maybe that's worth sticking with the LCD, but we're still getting 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB and high P3 with this. So it is remarkably color accurate. Okay, just quickly, I've teamed up with the lovely people over at Fast Hosts for this fantastic giveaway of up to £5,000 worth of tech. But first, Fast Hosts are a UK-based web hosting company, and they offer a one-stop shop for registering domain names, building websites, web and email hosting, cloud backups, everything you need in one place. Because it's important for me to own the tech chat domain names as while I'm mainly on you know, YouTube and Instagram, owning realtechchat.com or techchat.shop would make sense to protect the brand. And then I can use their website builder, which is free for up to two months and also there's no hidden costs. And it's drag and drop level of easy to make a blog, a shop, a forum, and most importantly, make it your own. But it gets better because if you're in the UK, you can be in a chance to win this ultimate work from home setup by entering Fast Host's Techie Test giveaway. Which famous Brit is recognized for inventing the internet? So click the link in the description below or go to fasthosts.co.uk slash the tech chap. Best of luck and thanks again to Fast Hosts. Okay, so far so good, but the big question is how much faster is this? Well, in benchmarks, compared to last year's model with the 1650Ti, albeit the one I've got here has the slightly lower spec 6-core i7 rather than the 8-core i9 I've got in here, and also 16 gigs of RAM versus 64 gigs in here. So bear that in mind, it's not an exact like-for-like, like. and we're looking at about a 35% boost in single core and a whopping 74% boost in multi-core, which is massive, although again, we do have the extra cores here. But as for graphics, and if we just include the GPU part of the time spy test, there's a 33% average boost. Although bear in mind that this is a 45 watt TGP variant of the card, so not the same as something like a 75 watt 3050 Ti you get in the ASUS ROG G14. So yes, it's the same name of card, but it's still a four giga RAM, 45 watt TGP, so very much on the low end, which makes sense given the form factor of this, but it does also therefore impact performance, particularly in games. So let's bring up another one of my lovely tables here, and you can see the results are kind of all over the place. In Rainbow Six Siege, we're getting a 2% boost, which is a bit strange, uh, but then in Fortnite and Cyberpunk, we're getting 50 and 70% gains, which is insane. 
But the big takeaway from this is the fact that we now get DLSS. Ray tracing, take it or leave it. It's gonna impact your performance and we haven't really got the power to push it. But DLSS is magic, the NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling. And it's why we're seeing a 73% boost in Cyberpunk going from 23 to 40, which is just about playable, or up to 73 with Fortnite. And this is all with high or epic settings. So it's less about the raw horsepower increase and more about the technologies that come with RTX. Realistically though, I'm not gonna play a ton of games on this. For me, it's more about the Lightroom and video editing and Premiere Pro. So I was curious how much of an upgrade we'd see over last year's model in Premiere, and it turns out nothing that significant. This new model was about 13% faster in my 10 minute 4K H.264 export. So not exactly night and day, but a little bit of a gain. And again, in tasks that use AI, such as the auto reframe in here, and there's a bunch of stuff in DaVinci Resolve, we'll see much bigger improvements uh, in performance because we have the new RTX cards over the 1650 Ti before. So I guess really, if you are thinking about buying one of these and you're maybe weighing up going for the older version because you could save some money and get a good deal, the question will be, are you gonna play games? Do those games support DLSS? Because really that's the big improvement in terms of performance. And are you using any of the sort of AI tensor core benefits uh, in you know, apps like Premiere Pro? If not to any of those, then you could probably stick with last year's version. It's maybe 15, 20% faster overall, but not that significant. And you're getting essentially the same design. Thunderbolt 4 isn't that much of an improvement over Thunderbolt 3. Uh, so yeah, you could probably go with last year's version and save a few quid. Oh, and I think it goes without saying that you should game at 1080p or 1200p on this screen, not 4K because that just destroys your frame rate. Although again, DLSS will have a bigger impact uh, improvement in terms of performance at that res, but play at 1920 by 1200. Now, when this thing is under load, it does get pretty toasty, particularly underneath. I measured a uh, peak exterior temperature of 53 degrees Celsius, so your lap will get hot with this. I would definitely use it on a desk. It's not uncomfortable on top, though. The keyboard and touchpad never got too warm. Uh, and also, I did notice it was a little bit quieter than last year's model under load, although you can still hear the fans, but it's not to an annoying level. And also, I haven't heard any coil whine. And finally, as for battery, as I say, we're getting two different sizes, whether you go for the Full HD or the 4K. Still a 86 watt hour battery, not quite the 99 watt hour battery we get in the MacBook Pro 16, for example. Um, and it's okay, I'm getting about six hours of use. I'd say it's on par with last year. And of course, if you are gaming, you'll get about an hour and a half with lower performance as well. So with light use, it'll get you through a full office day probably. And also the power brick isn't too big. And as you can see, it's actually color coordinated to the model you go for as well, which is quite nice. Although the actual plug itself is black, so that kind of ruins the theme a little bit, uh, but it is pretty portable. And like last year, it still charges via USB-C, which is nice. So you uh, can use that for your phone as well, assuming you're on Android. However, as good as this is, of course, there is some room for improvement. Unfortunately, the webcam is a little bit rubbish, as you can see, it's still 720p30. I've got proper natural lights on me here and it's still really noisy. The colors keep shifting. <sighs> Obviously, we've got very thin bezels and it's a plus that it is on the top bezel, so it's not directly looking up your nose, but considering how important webcams are at the moment and after the year we've had, it is disappointing. It's definitely one of those features I want to see upgraded in the future. However, as good as this is, of course, there is some room for improvement. Uh, the webcam is pretty bad, which is a real shame given how important that is these days. Also, it's a bit of a shame we have to compromise with the 3.5K res on the OLED model. Uh, it would be the best of both worlds if we had proper 4K, but it's not really a big deal, I guess. It would also maybe have been nice to have an AMD 5000 series option for this. Uh, although of course, Intel's new H45 watt series CPUs do directly go up against it. That would be nice, although you probably lose Thunderbolt as a result. And also, while I haven't had any quality control issues with this, I've not had a single problem, and I did buy this myself. It's not a fancy review sample that they've chosen for me. Obviously, Dells have famously had some uh, QC issues in the past, so we'll have to see. If you do buy this for yourself and have any issues, let me know in the comments, but so far, so good. And also, you know what? It would be great if they got rid of that 56 watt hour battery on the base full HD watt version. If you could get that 86 watt hour battery with the full HD screen, you'd have a really, really good battery life and it'd be a great 
15 inch travel laptops. And also I would actually love a quad HD version of this. Um, we've not had one so far, but we're starting to see uh, gaming laptops offer QHD resolutions. And I think that would be perfect for the screen size. You get a little bit of your battery back. It wouldn't kill your frame rate as much in games. And obviously you wouldn't maybe have to drop to 1080p. And also it would be a good deal sharper than if you go for the cheaper full HD version. So it'd be a bit more like a halfway house that you get on a MacBook Pro. So I would love to see a quad HD resolution, but not this year. So that is the new XPS 15. I always look forward to reviewing this. As I say, it's one of my favorite laptops. Pricey, but very, very good. And if you want a premium portable powerhouse, the triple P, I should work for Dell's marketing, then you can't really get better than this. There are, of course, other Windows options and the MacBook lineup. But maybe before you take the plunge on this, wait to see how the XPS 17 uh, fares and which one actually ends up being the better buy. In terms of my recommended spec, I would probably go with the i7 OLED screen, uh, the 3050 Ti, and also maybe 16 gigs of RAM and 512 storage or one terabyte. But as I say, you can always upgrade the RAM and storage yourself later, which is great. So yeah, if you fancy checking this out for yourself, I will leave links below. And if you did enjoy the video, then a cheeky like and subscribe would be lovely. And stay tuned for my 17 inch review and also my big comparison video thing. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.